morning, everyone. My name is Lacey Thickpin, and I am the MC for today. Um, if you are a guest, we are so excited that you came to worship with us. There is a connect card located in the seat in front of you. Sometime during the service, we would love for you to fill that out so we can get to know a little bit about you. Um, all who are able, will you please stand for the call to worship? Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 29, verses 1 through 2, and it reads, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, God, that we are able to have this time set aside to focus on you, God. God, you are so wonderful. God, you are all-knowing, all-powerful. God, you are I am. Heavenly Father, we pray that right now that you prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. That you, that you prepare our hearts to, to reflect on the goodness of this week, the trials of this week, the tribulations of this week. But through all of it, the, your grace and your mercy, God. Because, God, you truly have been faithful. But, God, as we are reflecting on how good you are, God, we have to be honest that we have sinned, that we have fallen short, dear God, that we have been rebellious, dear God. And, God, we ask that you forgive us. We repent of our sins, dear God. God, I pray that you bless all of those who are who are here either in person or online or on their way that we're able to leave this place with a closer walk with you lord yes it's nice to, to be in community and to say hi to people that we love and that we that we haven't seen in a few days but god we truly want to get to know you god because god you are faithful this is our prayer in jesus name amen after considering God and confessing our sins, we're reminded in the scripture that grace flows freely to those whose faith is in Jesus. So our assurance comes from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, and it reads, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Please continue to stand as we worship.
the world I bow down to see you God every night I bow down and see you a king so let's start right now why would we wait we can pray
just sing hallelujah till you come again. And I'll dance in your presence till you come again. We will sing hallelujah till you come again. Yes, we'll dance in your presence.
Psalm 23, starting with verse 4, says, this is ESV. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You are not alone. You are not alone. I know we live in a world where we're so connected through technology, but some of us still feel so alone. God is with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving us to be alone. God, thank you that you don't just take our plans and our thoughts and our wishes and you and grant us what we all the things that we want, God. God, because we don't know what's best for us. God, I am so thankful for your grace and for your mercy. God, thank you that you continue to be a friend to us, continue to be a father to us, continue to be our Savior. And God, as we are here and we're interceding and we're praying for spiritual disciplines, God, God, we pray that you, you continue to use your word to reveal to us who you are, that you continue to use your word to reveal to us who you are. God, because if we are honest, some of us have, and including myself, have a limited view of who God is. Sometimes I put you in the box and I, I give you boundaries and I say, God, this is who you are, but you're telling me I am more than that. God, I thank you for the conviction that comes from your word. Because God, sometimes I want you just to pay my bills. God, sometimes I want you just to heal me. God, sometimes I want you just to provide peace when my kids are all talking to me at the same time and I feel like I am overstimulated. But God, you are more than that. And God, thank you for being more than that. Thank you for not limiting yourself to our thoughts of you. God, I pray that you continue to use the word. God, as, I, as a church, we have been reading the New Testament in 90 days, dear God. And as we're coming to an end, God, God, I pray that you continue to reveal yourself through scripture. God, that we don't just, just use that time as a, a, just a checkbox, but that we're listening to what your word says. And God, for those who haven't participated, God, let them, let them start and finish strong. Yes, we have, we, some of us have missed some days and, 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 and forgot about some things, dear God, but let us finish strong. And God, I'm also praying for our spiritual discipline of corporate worship. God, thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God. God, thank you for allowing us to see others worshiping and praising your name. Thank you for allowing us to sing praises to you, dear God even if it's off key. God, we are so thankful for you. Continue to, to use us, God. Continue to grow us. Continue to stretch us, God, for your glory. Not for, not for our names to be elevated, but for your glory, God. Not for, you know, to get a, a brick on the wall with our names, but God, for your glory. For your glory, God, so that someone can say, I want to know the God that they serve. So that someone can say, I, I, I messed up. Can, can you pray for me? God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So as an expression of faith and solidarity with God's people, we confess our faith together using the New City Catechism. So how it works is I'll read the question and we'll read the answer together. So today we have one question, but a kind of long answer. All right, question number 12. What does God require in the ninth and 10th commandment? Nine, that we do not lie or deceive, but speak truth in love. 10, that we are con no, 10, not envy. With God. God has given them or us. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, 
just a quick, um, a quick announcement before I do the regular announcement. You might see someone around here with a fancy camera. Uh, we are collecting footage for our 10th church anniversary. Amen. So I want to say just ignore it, right? But I was a preschool teacher for many years, and I've been observed. And when someone new comes into the environment, you tell them just ignore it. They're like this. So do your best to just ignore it. The focus is on God. Amen. All righty. So I have, oh, I need to connect cards. So if you are a guest, uh, we would love to connect with you. In the seat in front of you, there is a connect card. So it's an opportunity for you to share your name, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, and if you are a regular or if you're a guest, there's an opportunity there for you to share your prayer. I was, I was raised that well, you don't tell nobody your business. You don't tell nobody your prayers. You go into your secret place in your secret closet, and it just be between you and Jesus. But I realize that there is there's beauty and greatness in numbers, and we would love to pray for you. So please, please, please be vulnerable. Be willing to share those prayer requests with us. It is now time for us to talk about giving. So here at Strong Tower, there are four ways to give. They're located on the screen, and each week, we want to encourage you, what, what does the scripture say about giving? And our scripture this week comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And it reads, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where Thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you have given us. God, thank you. Oh, God, you are truly, truly faithful. God, we pray that you, that you prick our hearts, that you compel us to give, dear God. And God, for those of us who, who, who are giving, God, I pray that you reveal to us how you want us to give more. It may not just be our treasures, dear God, but it may be Thanksgiving. It may be our time. It may be our testimony and sharing it with others. God, please use what you have given us so that you can get the glory, so that the message of the gospel of Jesus can be spread. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we have three announcements. So since we were just talking about money, this is a, I'm going to slide right on in to talk about our formation workshop that we have coming up um, on Saturday, April 13th. So money is one of the most talked about topics in scripture, but in the church, sometimes we don't talk about it that much, uh, even though it deeply impacts all of us. Amen, lights. Amen, air. Um, having money. That's what my husband says. Sometimes I'm like, baby, can you can you buy this and do this? He's like, Amen, lights. Anyhow, so, there we go. Amen, <laughs> uh, but money deeply impacts us. So on Saturday, April 13th at 9 a.m., we will have a formation class about the Bible on money. It's going to be taught by a crown financial expert on biblical work, saving, spending budgeting giving and more so please 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 if you are interested go to our events page at rsvp the cost is 15 dollars that covers lunch materials and child care so please rsvp um we also have serve one-on-one that's coming up and that is if you are wondering how to get involved at strong tower church every second sunday at 9 15 we have we host our serve one-on-one where you can discover what are your gifts what are the opportunities for you to serve? So if you're interested, please um, register at our events page, page at strongtower.org. Last announcement is we are having a formation cohort. Um, this year, we are really trying to make healthy disciples. And we are really committed to making sure that we are healthy. And so the formation cohort just allows us to come together and to learn about the word even deeper. We get to dive deeper into scripture, spiritual practices, and the theological understanding for a fulfilling and transformative life. 
please sign up. The deadline is May 12th. The deadline is May 12th. The deadline is May 12th. Um, because it will start September 8th, but there will be pre-work. At this time, um, our children can prepare to be dismissed. If you are new here, we have a children's ministry where children can learn about Jesus in a developmentally appropriate way. Um, if, if you need help checking in your child, you may go to the back where we have a leader that is there waiting for you. For everyone else, will you please stand? so we can continue to worship. of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, faithful promises, time and time again, you have proven, you do just what you say, though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast, and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to me yeah. God from age to age though the earth may pass away your word remains the same yeah. history can prove there's nothing you can do you're faithful and true though the storms may come and the winds may blow i'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass great is your faith My anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, you never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. still bless you when oh, I'm in the middle of the road and I don't know which way to go I still, I still bless you I've got a reason to bless your name you've been faithful you've been faithful. I still bless you I will bless your name I will bless your name great is great is your faith setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me oh great is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to
Amen, church. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. We just sung, I'll still bless you. Yeah. I'll still bless you. The Lord will forever and keep on blessing us. Well, my name is Asunji, and I'm a pastor, a resident here at Strong Tower. And my family and I, my wife and our two kids, we've been coming to Strong Tower now for a little over a year. And uh, we, we, we truly have love. We love this place. We love this fellowship and this family. And if you're a guest uh, coming in for the first time or it's been a while, uh, welcome back. If it's been a while since you've been in the house, uh, we just want to, again, welcome you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. And uh, now we're going to receive a word from the Lord our God. Before we do, let us pray. Father, thank you. Lord, thank you for the breath in our lungs to just sing, Lord, out to you, to lift your name and praise you, to worship you, to cry before you. Lord God, to just bring all of ourselves to you, Lord. And despite our sin and our mess, you still bless us and be a God to us, be near to us, save us, and return back to us. Lord, as we open up your word, shall all disturbances, distractions, or anything that would want to steal, kill, or destroy the seed that you have for us this morning, Lord God, be far from this place. Lord, we've come to hear from you once more. We love your voice, and it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So, this morning, uh, it's a special morning. And uh, it's a special morning because if you've been with us for the past now, I say about nine months, we've been walking through a series on the book of Samuel. First Samuel, and now we're in Second Samuel. But good news is, or, or maybe good news or bad news, if, if, if you're a lover of the Old Testament like I am, uh, this is it. We will, this is it. All right? Amen? Amen? And uh, for many of you, I know you feel as if we're going back home to the New Testament where we belong. But the Old Testament is good. It's rich. The Lord is there. And we will see where the Lord and what the Lord has for us this morning. And uh, the 24th chapter. Amen. Amen. All right. So we will be in 2 Samuel chapter 24 this morning. Uh, you may turn there on your devices or if you have your Bible with you. And if not, it will be up available on the screen for us. So 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel 24. And uh, we're going to start at verse 1. We'll stop at 10. And then we'll jump back in as we walk through this word. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go number Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and number the people that I may know the number of the people. But Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are, while the eyes of my Lord the king still see it. But why does my Lord the king delight in this thing? But the king's word prevailed against Joab and the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and began from Aroer, and from the city that is in the middle of the valley toward Gad and on to Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to Kadesh in the land of the Hittites. And they came to Dan, and from Dan they went on, went around to Sidon, and came to the fortress of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hivites and Canaanites. And they went out to the Negev of Judah at Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days, and Joab gave the sum of the numbering of the people to the king. 
In Israel, there were 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000. But David's heart struck him after he had numbered the people. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, O Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. I have done very foolishly. Our thought and our prayer for this morning, uh, which I will tag, we will tag our text is, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So one of my favorite childhood memories growing up uh, was going up the street from my grandmother's apartment in Mount Vernon, New York, and going to an empty parking lot and playing pickup baseball. And uh, I wasn't that good at ba- baseball. My cousins were all better than I was, but we still had a good time. And uh, there was some, some of the kids from the block that were actually pretty nice went off to uh, do bigger and better things uh, with baseball than, than, I, than I could uh, ever. Um, but none of them, especially the pitchers, none of them would be able to do one of the rarest things ever to happen in sports or for someone to witness in sports. One of the rarest events ever to happen in sports is for a pitcher to throw what's called a perfect game, right? So I had to look up what that was. I didn't know the difference between a no-hitter and a perfect game, right? So for those of you who are not as um, up to what baseball is about and what a perfect game is, I got a quick description for us of what a perfect game is. So this is a perfect game. A perfect game in baseball happens when a pitcher or pitchers win a baseball game by retiring all 27 opposing batters back-to-back without allowing a single base runner. That means no hits, no walks, no hitting by a pitch, and no mistakes by the catcher or fielders that let a batter get on base. A truly, truly, truly rare thing in Major League Baseball. In fact, in over the 200,000 plus games from 18 whenever the MLB kicked off, right, there's only been how many? Some of you fanatics may know about how many perfect games? 24, right? So I don't know those numbers from 24 to 200,000 exactly, but only 24 over 200,000 over a century and plus uh, Major League Baseball, there's only been 24. And of the 24, 16 have been by uh, right-handers, and then the other eight have come from left-handers. And one of the left-handers in September of 1965 pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers would pitch a perfect game against the Chicago Cubs at Dodger Stadium and be one of those uh, lefties to be able to complete one of these rarest uh, things that ever happened in Major League Baseball. And his name was Sandy Koufax. I knew nothing about him until I looked, I looked up uh, some of these guys. So Sandy Koufax, a lefty, he would do it. And the city of Los Angeles would come to love him. All the media would come around him and praise this feat that he's done. And he would be able to uh, receive a new nickname in town. He would no longer be Sandy Koufax, but he would actually be called the left arm of God. And even some would go off to call him the ghost. But Sandy, I believe, he was a Jew, a humble man. He would deny such praise. And this morning, as we close out our series, the divine author, from 1 Samuel chapter 1 to now this very last chapter in 2 Samuel, the true Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of the Lord, is going to close out this series with three strikes. And I want us to look at each strike and movement of the right hand 
of God because we know our Lord is a righty. He does a lot with his right hand, you know? So, strike number one. Here it comes. Verse 10. But David's heart struck him after he had numbered the people. Okay. David becomes struck by his own heart because of what he has done. And out of being struck, what would come out of his mouth would overflow from his heart. Being struck by the Spirit of God living within him is that prayer that we've heard many a times throughout our series. I have sinned. I have sinned. But David, what did you do? I mean, you just, you was a king. You're a part of your roles and responsibilities to take care of the people of God against enemies. You want to be able to get out in front of preparation for the next attack because one's always coming. So you want to go out and get a census. How many men do we have that can wield the sword? But David knew that he had sinned. And I believe we begin to see what it was in David's heart that he made known by the Spirit of God within him would confess his prayer of I have sinned. Coming in verse 2, he says, that I may know the number, that I may know the number. You see... Israel, David is king, was supposed to at all times and in all circumstances trust in the Lord their God as their shield, as their shield, their protector, their defender. But David, and I do think we have some influence in what just happened right before our passage in chapter 23. We get this long list of David's mighty men. So, so built up. In pride, I'm sure, pride being the root of nearly all sin, as we even go all the way back to Adam and Eve and their thirst for knowledge. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil that left them so discontent that they had to go and see for themselves. And here we are again, that I may know. So David, I have sinned, was coming from a root of discontentment in the unknown. How many of us knows what's that, what, what, what that right there is like? That unknown. It's an uncomfortable place to be. But in David's persistence, in his earnestness, in his authority, in his power, he would persist to ensure that he knew the number. So Joab, being a faithful subordinate, a commander of the army of Israel, would eventually go. But before he goes, he's sure to warn David or ask David, but why does my lord the king delight in this thing? How much of our delights, how much of our joys is attached to knowing that number? What's in that? I need to know to the penny what's in my check-ins and what's in my savings. I need to, I need to look back and see what are all those streaks that I've set myself out to accomplish and that I've accomplished. New Testament 90-day plan been a struggle, but, but you know, we're we, we going to finish strong. Uh, you see, David was so busy numbering his success that the result of him numbering his success would lead to the numbering of his sin. So after David declares, he struck and he says, I have sinned. Gad, who was a prophet of David and for the people of Israel, would receive a word from the Lord. And as he would receive this word from the Lord, he would be told to take it to King David and give him now three options. 
do his sin. The first is that you and the people of Israel for three years will experience famine. That's your first choice. Your second, you and the people of Israel shall for three months be tracked down and hunted and pursued by your foes and your enemies. Or lastly, for three days, a pestilence shall come upon you and the people of God. So in, in the ultimatum between these three choices, this is how David responds. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel from the morning until the appointed time, and there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba 70,000 men. So there were 800 in Israel, 500 in Judah that could wield the sword. But all that numbering just led to an outcome of numbering lives, the loss of husbands and fathers because of David's discontentment. You see, David's discontentment, even when he would send out Joab and the commanders of the army, out of his discontentment, he would put those around him in harm and in danger. It says that they would walk through a cut through the center of the middle of a valley. Old time warfare, the valley is not where you want to be. You want to be up top. You want to be able to see everything that's coming from all directions. They would cut through the valley. Not only would they cut through the valley, but they would, they would walk along the edge and the border of Israel where their enemies were still looming and lurking. And it even says it in our text that they were in the cities of the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites, the enemies of God. But I know you heard it. When he was in great distress, he cried out to the Lord like he's done all throughout his life. I have sinned. I will go to my Lord because his mercy is great. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so from here in, in verse 16 comes the second strike that we encounter. And when the angel, verse 16, and when the angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the calamity and said to the angel, who was working destruction among the people. It is enough. Now stay your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Arunah the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking the people and said, Behold, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and against my father's house. You see, David, face to face, willing to confess his sin of discontentment. And let me, let me share with you, uh, it was very helpful as I thought about my own discontentment. An author by the name of Jeremiah Burrs writes this excellent, I'm only on chapter one, this book on contentment. It's called The Rare Jewel of Christian Contentment. And listen to the ways that he describes discontentment. There is such unruliness in our thoughts and affections that our judgments are not always able to rule our thoughts and affections. But when a Christian is content in the right way, the quiet comes from the temper and disposition of his own heart, then from any external argument or from the possession of anything in the world. So David... As he, as it literally, as he, as he counted 1,000 or 1, 300,000 would be struck by this truth. There is nothing in this world outside that will satisfy our heart. There, there, there is nothing but the Lord. So we were on to the second strike. Here's the second strike. David, he says, I have sinned. 
I have done wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Please, please. As David's watching the angel of the Lord strike the people of God, now what overflows and comes out of his heart is please, please, please. And it's such a, a short but powerful display of what it was for David to be a man after God's own heart. So uh, do your generosity and me being able to walk into the residency program. I've been able to go to school and start learning languages and original languages of the Bible. Still don't know too much of what is what, but I'm learning. But please, I found out is uh, it's a two letter word both in Hebrew, and it can be transliterated, or AK just translated into English as a two-letter word. And this word, and it was actually funny because my godfather's in town this week, and uh, we were trying to figure out what we're going to do, and do you want to go to the beach, do you want to, you know, what, what, what do you want to do while you're here? And he sent me back what this two-letter word means in Hebrew. So we all about to learn a little Hebrew. N-A, nah. But this is a different kind of nah. <laughs> this is that nah where you, 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 you don't have, you don't have the, the, the cute and pretty articulation to let out before the Lord when your heart is desperately crying not only over your own salvation, but a brother or a sister or a mother or a father or a niece or a friend or a neighbor or a stranger. You see... The, 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 what, what made him so overwhelmed in his pleas was he saw the people of God being struck. His compassion was so, so much so when he saw the people of God being struck, he would go and he would cry out, Nah, please, Lord. And even he returns back to his childhood, to that childlike faith. He starts talking like a shepherd again. But these sheep, what have they done? And out of this real compassion for the people of God, after his pleas, he would ask the Lord, let your hand be against me and against my father's house. That's a bold prayer. And uh, if I could be honest, I don't know if David really knew what he was asking for. But as we now close with the last chapter to 2 Samuel, amen, in verse 18 and then in verse 25, we'll come be faced with the third strike for our time together. Beginning in verse 18, and the word is rich. I'll spare us. We'll read 18, and then we'll go straight to 24. And Gad, the prophet, came that day to David and said to him, Go up, raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arunah. Now moving to 24. But the king said to Arunah, I messed that up. I didn't give y'all enough context. Going straight to 25. True. Listen, this is, the la- this is it to 2 Samuel. This is it. This is the last verse in 2 Samuel. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord responded to the plea for the land, and the plague was averted from Israel. Do you see the third strike coming? I didn't see it originally as I was reading this text, asking the Lord to give us a word. But as I begin to both feel and both listen to the Lord, my grandmother sent me a prayer. And in her prayer, 
the, the, the third and final strike we're left with is as plain as day. Listen to this prayer that my grandmother sent me. What a great privilege seeing this beautiful day in the land of the living. And we say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you in your household this morning as you go out for your daily activities that testimony shall continually fill your mouths. And God said to Abraham, look up and count the number of the stars. He looked up, but it was uncountable. As the stars are uncountable, so shall your blessings, your favor, your helpers, your progress be uncountable. May the good Lord wrap his loving arms around you and your whole family today and always give you all his loving peace, protect you from all evils, bless your jobs, bless your family, and your mouth be full of his praises at the end of today and always in Jesus' mighty name. Depending on your translation, I'm reading from the ESV. So the Lord responded to the plea. Many translations give it to us plainly. So the Lord responded to David's prayer. Is it there now? Thank you, Lord. The Lord responded to his prayer. Thank you, Lord. You see, going all the way back to the beginning of 1 Samuel, we're given an open. There's a woman of God crying out before the, before the Lord because she's, she's barren. And in her barrenness, she asked the Lord to open up her womb. And out of her womb, or out of her womb comes Samuel, the very one in which this book is named after. And she would lift up a song and a praise. And this is where we're left. We're left now to sing a song and a praise and a prayer to the Lord as we've seen him faithfully deal with his people in mercy time and time again, in forgiveness and provision. So much so that for the whatever amount of years from when David prayed this prayer, the original prayer of please let your hand be against me and my people, the Lord would answer his prayer rightly. For it would be thousands of years later when the Lord would send his son. He would send the Lord Jesus. And when he, when he, when he comes, he would be without sin. But he would become sin, and he would go on the cross and, 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 be, and, and, and bleed out, and on the cross also pray that prayer of intercession of, please forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And the Lord, as he's hanging on the cross, himself will become struck with a spear. And it says that, that spear would strike some believe it touched his heart as well, and out from it would come water and blood. You see, this blood is like no other blood. It is a blood that washes away all of our sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, this is the blood at which when he was in the garden before going to the cross, praying, please, if there be any other way in so much desperation because I know at times I can, and, and it was so thankful to hear a, a word from Pastor Ben about, it's not just about our intensity as we pray or our earnestness. It's about honesty. And as honest as the Lord could be, he would, praying in, 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 in the garden with, 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 with blood and tears, would say yes to answering this prayer from David, to be the one to come and save the people from the plague of sin, death, and Satan forever. And not only has he done that work, and we're going to hear it preach, trust, believe next Sunday about how he rose three days later, amen. He would 
leave to go to the Father. He would sit at the right hand of the Father. He would offer us at his right hand if we would be patient and wait for his return. So it is Palm Sunday. When the Lord comes back and we see him and we become transformed into his likeness, we, we may have prayed many a times, I have sinned on the earth. We may have pleaded many times for that loved one, please, or for ourselves, please, wanting a thing. But when we see him and we become like him, he will put an end to those I have sinned and those please, but all we would have to say before him is thank you, Lord. What are you asking the Lord for right now? Wisdom, peace. Go, go, go down. You know what you're asking the Lord for. In response, I've already given it to you. I've given you my son. You see, the greatest number is one and only. The greatest number that we can ever hear, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever shall believe in him shall have what? Eternal life. A life full of contentment and peace and joy. A whole lot of singing. A whole lot of singing in that eternal land of the living of thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So as we close our series, as we've seen the picture of David's life, I have sinned, please, to thank you, Lord. Let us, let us reflect the same in our, in our own life of thank you, Lord. You see, when I first moved to Florida and I would see all the palm trees, uh, not my favorite tree. I like the Spanish moss. I think Spanish moss are a little, I, I just like them better than them palm trees. But I'm telling you, a Florida Palm Sunday, if the Lord come back, he might come to Florida for real. When he come back, we ought to be able to go to the backyard, the front yard, get the palm tree. Hosanna. Hosanna. So, taxes is due. May have enough. They taking too much. Thank you, Lord. I got a job. Co-workers. Boss, it's hard. I have a job. Thank you, Lord. You see? Desiring for a, a mate and a spouse. The Lord is my shepherd. He is my husband. Thank you, Lord. Count them up. Count those up. Your many thank yous to the Lord. It's not a sin to count for even David, or excuse me, Moses in the Psalms. David didn't write them all. Told us to number our days. And we may, I believe it's growing wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A last encouragement from the word. Coming from the words of the Apostle Paul. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing yet possessing everything. We have everything. All the riches in heaven and on earth because we have Christ and his spirit dwelling with us. Let's offer our prayer of thank you to the Lord. Lord, forgive us. There's been many, many, many ways in our heart that we've been discontent that we have, out of our discontentment, sought out and done things that have hurt both your heart and those around us. Lord, Holy Spirit, possess us all the more. Let our, let our lives, let in every circumstance and in every hour we be able to say thank you. Even as Jesus was breaking the bread and before going to the cross, he would receive the bread and he would say, giving thanks. Let us follow in the way of our Savior and our King, of always giving thanks to our Father. Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So at this time, uh, I would like to invite up our prayer team to either come to the front. Um, also, we'll have some people on our prayer team to the back. And as we sing our last song of worship, if there's anything in your heart that you want to confess before the Lord, an I have sinned prayer, Someone is here to pray with you. If there's a please, you would, you've been begging the Lord to save 
someone in your life dearly. There's someone there. And then lastly, if there's just a thank you, you want to share with someone what the Lord has done in your life, there's someone here to pray with you. Let us stand as we worship. So I will walk 
walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, 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 my victory. Uh, before we dismiss, a few reminders. Uh, first of all, if you're here, we're so glad you're here worshiping with us today. Glad you could be our guest. My name is Ben. I'm the lead pastor. Uh, thank you, Asunji, for that word. Where is Asunji? There he is, right there. Yes, amen, amen. As Asunji said, he's our pastoral resident. We actually just hired a second pastoral resident who will start in the summer. His name is Renzo Diaz. Uh, you can be praying for him as he transitions up from Miami to Lakeland. Uh, but our vision for that program is to continue raising up new pastors in our church and to either have them be pastors here or go out, plant churches, be pastors in other places. Uh, but we want to be a place that's really training up pastors and, and being a hub for God's uh, mission that he's doing in our community. So we're grateful for Asunji. Uh, he's got eh, six months, 12 months, somewhere left to finish seminary. He's getting closer to the finish line, uh, but we're so glad for him. Uh, another reminder, if you're a guest, make sure you fill out this Connect card before you leave. We would love to pray for you, uh, get in your life, and, and help in any way we can. Help you get connected in our church, or if you have other things uh, that you need, we would love to bless you and be a part of that. So you can fill that out so we can know how we can be a blessing. And lastly, uh, the formation cohorts. I've had a lot of people ask me about this since we announced it last week. It is one of the things I'm most excited about for this year for our church because I think it's going to radically change people's lives. And so I would encourage you, if you're on the fence thinking about it, just go for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to be one of the teachers. We're going to have some other great teachers to be a part of it. But it is a time for us to go deeper in discipleship. So if you, you've been asking yourself, how do I go deeper in my relationship with God? How do I grow and, and continue to nourish that relationship? Uh, this is a great opportunity for that. We'll be talking about uh, how to read the Bible, talking about spiritual practices, talking about just spiritual health and, and formation, uh, emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually. So we would love you to be a part of that. You need to apply. Uh, that sounds scary, but it's really just a way for us to say we want to make sure you have a little buy-in. Tell us why you want to be a part of it. Tell us why you think this is going to be helpful for you. And so it's a real short little application. Uh, we would love for you to fill that out, and then we'll follow up with you about how you can get started over the summer because there's some homework we have before it gets started in September, which I'm also very excited about. So please grab one of these on your way out. They're in the foyer next to our hospitality team out there. Grab one. Uh, you can learn more about it. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Now, if your faith is in Christ, hear the benediction as he sends us out with his grace and favor. In the 
good news of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in his peace. Love you all.